everyone and welcome to Mysteries Explained for, live from Tucson, Arizona. I am your host Becky. And I'm Will. And tonight we actually already have our guest on the line so we don't want to take up too much time. But we do want to remind everyone who's listening tonight to please subscribe to us on Spreaker and help us get to iHeartRadio. We're already found on Spotify. We're trying for the iHeart again. But tonight, our special guest is Amy Allen, and we cannot wait to bring her on. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be bringing on Amy Allen. Amy, are you there? Hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. (laughs) All right. Well, welcome to the show, Amy. We are so glad to have you on. Thank you for having me. We are very excited. Uh, I know we got a lot of people listening in tonight, and uh, we are all ready to talk to you and about everything that you got going on. Oh, okay. I don't know what I have going on. (laughs) It's not much, is it? (laughs) No, no, it's not. I I don't have much going on at all. (laughs) <laughs> just hanging out <laughs> working you know <laughs> well yeah. you are out and about filming dead files right now right yeah yes we are currently in ohio filming i think our eighth case for the season oh. that starts in june that starts in june i know that was going to be one of the questions so i'm glad you covered that <laughs> yeah it starts in June. I don't know the exact day yet, but it starts in June. Yeah, well, we are looking forward to the new season. We've been watching you guys for a while now. Yeah, been on 11 seasons now. <laughs> I mean, we're working on the 11th, so we've aired, what, 10? Yeah, so. Long time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. So I have a question for you, because we already know how Steve got onto the show how did you get involved with the show um basically i was actually about to leave the industry as far as the like you know tv and whatnot industry um and i got a phone call from um jim casey from painless productions and he said that he was interested in the work I had done, and I said, look, if we're going to do this, you got to do it the right way, and I sent him the methodology uh, that I had developed with uh, individuals like Dr. William Moll, and I said, we need to follow this method, and I sent him some newspaper articles that kind of described the process in action and uh, that I worked with you know, police officers and the like, and that I have to go in blind, and uh, he was actually willing to to try it, which is insane, I learned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't do a show like that, and, um, but he, you know, he gave me a couple of test tries, saw that I could actually do this, and we went for it, and uh, that's basically how it all came about. Um so, yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, that's Here really we are. cool. Yeah, we, when yeah. we talked to Steve before, I know he seems to always be amazed with what you do come up with at Reveal. You know, he says that he's always amazed that, you know, you guys are, you know, right on and everything. So that's very cool. Mm. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every Every walk is a test for me. So, you know. It's always like, okay, cool, all right. And then, you know, the main thing is to try to help everybody involved, you know, help the dead. Like, I'm this case, I'm particularly worried about one of the deceased individuals finding help. And, you know, so, you know, that's really, at the end of the day, what it's all about. Right, exactly. I hope, you know, yeah, hopefully you can help the living with whatever issues they have. (laughs) Sometimes they're beyond help, though, but... (laughs) That's a different subject. (laughs) Nobody is beyond help. Uh, Nobody. Yeah. We 
we, we like to tease about that, though, because uh, we, you know, do the paranormal cases out here in Tucson, too. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're just like shaking your head going, OK, I'm really not sure how to handle this, but uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you live uh, in Tucson. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely have worked some. You know, I, I did a lot of work with the the local uh, police department there, and uh, with some investigative uh, investigative journalists out there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely have seen some very interesting things. Uh, <laughs> that go on in Tucson and uh, in areas around Tucson, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, that is one of our first questions for you, and I want to encourage all of our, oh, I can't, I'm tongue-tied, all of our listeners to get in the chat room. All you have to do is hit that little chat bubble, and uh, you can ask Amy questions. And one of the first questions is, what is your most memorable case? My, my, oh, my most memorable case. Oh, my God, there's so many. Uh, um, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> a lot to come to mind. Um, gosh, I don't, there was one, okay, in Arizona, there was one, there was one up in, um, gosh, I want to say it was in, oh, well, there was one in Tucson, actually, where, a woman had a PK manifestation, uh, and it consisted of her ex-husband, uh, like aspects of what she projected of her ex-husband's personality, her lawyer's personality, and her personality. And it created this nasty entity that was physically assaulting people who would come over for dinner, in particular, like picking up the chair with them in it and tossing them across the room. Oh, wow. Um, and um, there was oil leaking, like oil leaking from all of her walls. It would just start popping and bleeding oil from all of her walls. Uh, we would walk through a room and it would feel like you were being pickled. And you'd look back and there would be thousands of tiny little pieces of paper with words on them. Um, and... So that was an interesting case, uh, and she was a great, great woman, um, and we worked with her for, for a little bit, and, uh, you know, she had to go, and, uh, you know, one of the things that she was going through was menopause, and she wasn't dealing with it, so we went, you know, how to get her to the doctor, how to get her treated for that, get her treated for stress, you know, she had to go into therapy, and but in the end, it all it all finally worked out, well, that's but good yeah, enough. that was quite... Yeah, it was an interesting case, that's for sure. I can imagine. Uh, so we yeah. already have another question, too. And that is going to be, what was the first experience you remember? Uh, well, I, I think I, I, I've talked about it a lot, I think, uh, which when I was, the one that I remember, I believe I was about four years old, and I was in a house that we were living in in Arvada, Colorado, and I had shadow people um, that would visit me at night, um, and they would show themselves on my closet door. My bed faced the closet door, and it was a man and a woman. They would go back and forth. They would be swaying, and it would be just really nice and peaceful, and I thought that they were my friends, and then over time... They, I had a humidifier in the room. It's really freaking dry in, in uh, Colorado, by the way. It's drier than in Arizona. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so I had a humidifier in my room, and I know I wasn't feeling well, and they got me to bite the cord to the humidifier. Um, they were trying to take me with them. And that's when I figured out that they were not good uh, people and that I should be frightened of them. And then they started being a little bit more aggressive and doing things that were scary, uh, like peeling off from the wall and looking at me uh, from down the hallway while I would try to go to the bathroom um, and just being very menacing. Um, fortunately, 
and, and the neighborhood was horrible too. And we're actually going back soon to start to film a documentary about my life. And I'm going back to all of the houses that I lived in and all the go over all the paranormal experiences and come to find out that this house, the number has changed, the street name has changed. They've um, done a lot of weird things to this particular house. Um, so there's some kind of a mystery there uh, as to what happened in that house and at that location. Um, we're trying to dig into that right now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because all the houses I've come across that do that are, for instance, John Wayne Gacy's house um, and places like that where they come in and they'll change the addresses and right. change the look of the house. And so it was pretty, pretty shocking to discover that. Yeah. So is Tucson going to yeah. be one of those places that... Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Well, we're a lot that went on in it. that. <laughs> huh? said we're very interested in that part <laughs> yeah yeah it'll be good i'll definitely hit you guys up when we come out there to film yeah because we know firsthand that tucson has a lot of paranormal history here and you know with your gifts i'm sure it was even more outrageous so <laughs> yeah that's one of the reasons why i left i mean tucson you know is incredibly active as you know um the shadow people I mean, I remember being in a class, and we just got onto the subject of, uh, of shadow people, and it was amazing. There were 21 people in this class, and we're discussing this, and I was like, well, let's see a raise of hand. You know, how many people have seen shadow people out and about in Tucson? And I think it was like 18 people raised their hands. Oh, wow. That's astounding. That's astounding. And I'm talking about seeing them in the streets. Not just in the houses. Uh, Tucson is is an amazingly active active place. Yeah. 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 We've uh, we've done several cases out here, and it's amazing the things we run into. I know I've seen things, and um, we well, I in particular will sometimes have things follow me home and see them in the house, and then Will has seen things, and our kids have seen things too. So. We know firsthand yep. that there's a lot that goes on in Tucson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have a question. You see dead people. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you deal with that in everyday life? Um, I don't know. You know, it took a lot of years to um, come to terms with it. Um, and then figure out how to not go insane and <laughs> how to balance you know daily life and you know it was it was a long long process I mean it took you know really from my first memory there at four until you know I was probably in my mid-20s to really have a handle on what the fuck was going on and how to I guess lack of a better term control it uh, turn it on and off, um, and function. Uh, but it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, it does, you know, it's hard. It can be hard. I can imagine. Now, have you ever used this ability to find out what's going on around you? Like whether things are going on behind your back that you should know about that nobody wants to tell you about? Um, well, uh, actually, <laughs> uh, I'm not, well, I'm not a telepath at all. I'm not a psychic. I'm not, you know, I'm really mostly just a physical medium. Um, but my guide, um, occasionally would tell me things that I don't think he really should have. I don't know. Uh, yeah, just once in a while. Like, you know, this person's doing this, and then I would go over there and confront them, and they'd get pissed off at him. And <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it's happened. Oh, that's cool, though. So you mentioned at the age of four is when you started seeing um, the shadow people. Is that when you pretty much realized that you could communicate with spirits, or did that kind of come a little bit? Oh, no, I didn't know what the hell that was. I mean, I didn't know what the hell was going on <laughs> at all. 
I mean, I thought it was like kind of normal, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I guess this is a thing. And, you know, um, continued that way. I know my grandmother, when I was like seven came and I was like, okay, I know she's dead. I mean, I knew she was a dead person at that time. I was in Lakewood, Colorado and, um, she showed up and there was also a dead kid that was living in the closet. I thought that was normal. Um, there was a thing outside. I thought that, you know, I just, I didn't know I was a child. Right. No idea really what, 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 what it meant. So at what age did you kind of come to terms with the fact that this is something that was special about you? Special. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, well, I, I thought it was something that was wrong with special. me for a very long time. <laughs> Uh, but I think I finally kind of understood what it was when I was about, like, 18 or so. It all kind of came together. I was watching James Bond Prague. And I knew I wasn't just like him, but I knew that was something. This is something. This is what it is. This is this is, um, this is it, you know. And I freaked out. I freaked out and just started bawling. And, yeah, just any moment, for yeah. sure. Has to be kind of rough though, because uh, to always see that and be able to do that. I mean, is there any time that you actually kind of have difficulties knowing the difference between the dead or the living, or is it really obvious to you the difference? Mm, once in a blue moon, that'll happen. Just, I mean, like, because the dead just look so alive so I'm like oh oops you know it happens once in a blue moon I had just been back to knowledge and um m one of my most vivid memories of this uh, of a mistake like that happening was uh Matt and I were in line <clears throat> at a, like a Walgreens and there's this kid like who's sitting in the checkout line and you know, and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Like, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, get up. You need to move. Like, what's wrong with you? We need, you know, I didn't want to step over him. And that's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, the fucking kid. And, but there was, you know, Matt couldn't see the kid. <laughs> so it was a dead kid and I'm throwing a fit. But, you know, I mean, I was tired, you know, so sometimes it happens. Yeah, I could imagine. Now, do you like have. Because I've heard, you know, from other people that they, like, put strict rules saying, you know, you can't visit me or do this or that type thing during certain times. Do you do things like that to try to help control? Oh, yeah. Or? Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I open, I close. Uh, when they get antsy, because, you know, even when you're closed and you do protections, all that kind of stuff around your house, sometimes they still get in. You know, if they're tenacious, they're going to freaking find a way in. And, um, you know, and then you have to really stand your ground. And uh, and it can be a little bit of a battle to get them out. But, uh, yeah. Now, you recently got married, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, October 31st, we got married. Oh, what Yay. a perfect date. We've been together for seven years, huh? I said, what a perfect date to do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, Will and I are actually renewing our vows in May. We're going to be together for 10 years when we do that, so. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, we're Thank all you. excited. But Where are you doing it? We're actually going to Vegas. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You guys are going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> we were originally supposed to get married in Vegas, in all reality. And, uh, well, we had a little oopsie uh, of I got pregnant. And so we kind of moved up the wedding and did it quickly here in Tucson before, you know, the baby was born. Uh, so now we're going to go do it in Vegas like we had originally planned. So Nice. Very nice. Yeah. And this well, time we're taking all again. of the daughters because we have four daughters. So all four of them are going with us. Oh, wow. I didn't know you guys had four kids. Yes. All four daughters. Wow. Okay. 
Yep. Well, <laughs> dang. Mm-hmm. Well, congrats. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like, and they're yeah, all glowing. <laughs> okay. That's... Are they all in it? Are they all going to be in it too? Are you going to an Elvis? No, we're not doing Elvis. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to this little chapel, and it's just like this quick renewal thing. Um, they're all going to dress up and everything, but Aww. yeah, it's going to be fun. I mean, they the ages of our kids are 8, 12, 16, and 19, so it's not like they can gamble or anything, but you know. <laughs> so it's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got two teenagers. Yes. And They're a preteen both are coming learning up. How to drive. Oh. <laughs> In Arizona. Oh, no. Aren't you okay. glad you're not living there right now? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard, though, that the city is coming along amazingly. I have yet to get back there to check out the city. I was back there to do a case I think it was like last season or season before I don't know but I was only up north and um and I think down south I think but um yeah I've heard that the city is just booming right yes downtown has grown so much I know right uh when we started Tucson Ghost Tour which was back in 2013 I think it was Mm -hmm. yeah downtown was like completely dead uh huh. There was like nothing going on downtown except for you know the little ghost stories that we were telling, and now it's so crowded, so happening, so much construction though, and so much being built and being remodeled and uh, dug up that it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, lots of bodies they've been finding too. Yes. When they built the new courthouse, they had to, like, move, I think it was, like, 3,000 bodies or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. And then they wonder why downtown's haunted. (laughs) I know, right? That's what we were always telling them. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah, but um, back to the married part, and then I'll ask the next question. Uh, I was wondering, because like I said earlier... When we do investigations, sometimes things follow us home and then, you know, our daughters or Will will see things. I tend to be the most sensitive and things tend to like me for some odd reason. But Uh when you do your stuff, does your husband ever see anything or have anything happen to him or is he completely closed off to it? Oh, no. He's definitely an empath. It's something we're trying to deal with. Um, But... He, you know, it's more like we've lived in places in California that have been active and uh, one house in particular, and he had a lot of experiences there with some dead people. Like he would see them walking through the walls and, you know, he gets upset about it. Um, And then the place we currently live, there's some activity that I'm not going to necessarily go into right now. Um, but he's had experiences there as well. Um, so so he's definitely an empath. He does have, you know, anybody who's a sensitive in any form will typically have experiences with the other abilities. So whether it be like seeing apparitions, hearing, smelling, whatever, you know, you'll have something from each different ability at some point in your life and experience. Um, but his main ability seems to be uh, being an empath and absorbing living and dead energies. Um, but it's something we're trying to learn how to work with for him. Okay. Yeah. yeah I know some people, they'll say, you know, their spouse may, you know, do it, but they're completely closed off to it. So that's why I was kind of wondering. Will's more. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. He's more, yeah, he's more, uh, he's unwillingly opened, unfortunately. But he, you know, he's been in the paranormal area in, indirectly for, you know, 15 years. Okay. Uh, and it, he's either done paranormal work or he's done um, crime, uh, working cases and, you know, really horrible ones. And so 
I think that's why, I think he was just drawn there because he was a sense of didn't know any better and was drawn to these kinds of genres to work in and, uh, and has subsequently been exposed to, to a lot of death and dying and dead and phenomena and then, of course, meeting me. And <laughs> so, unfortunately, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. Oh, at least he loves me. <laughs> yeah. that, that's what I got to yeah. say about Will. Will is more of the skeptic, <laughs> and uh, he will definitely keep trying to find human causes. But the only uh-huh. reason he got drawn into this was because of me. And, you know, like I said, even though he's the uh, skeptic, he still ends up with some things that he can't explain. And, you know, he's like, I just uh-huh. saw a shadow in our kitchen. What followed you home this yeah. time, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, Matt was definitely like that. Matt was hardcore skeptic when I met him. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And uh, and then that changed over time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Our, our next question is, uh, they're wanting to know, where is the most haunted location you've ever been to? Mm. Uh, um, I think, you know, the one that really comes to mind is, well, the state of Michigan um, absolutely is, is insane. Uh, the state of Kansas is insane. Um for different reasons, but the most active place for this place that really, really bothered me personally was the prison out in New Mexico. That was bad. Really, really bad. Oh, wow. We've never been so, to a prison out in New Mexico. Yeah, it was out in, in Albuquerque. I think it was in Albuquerque. Uh, and it was for, we actually went there for the dead files. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I almost died. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Started hemorrhaging. At the reveal, I was hemorrhaging. Oh, that's uh-huh. not good. Yeah. So, there was a very, there's a thing there that just, honestly, that land should be cleared. There should be a fence put up. Um, Yeah. There is an, an, an entity there that is, is beyond, yeah, I don't need, it's, it, it, the words just fail me, so, yeah. Oh, wow. Hate it, hate it, yes. That's not good at all. So, Mm-mm. we've we've touched base about you living in Tucson, and I know before the show you said that you were out here for about 11 years. Mm-hmm. And I know that while you were out here, you did some investigating too, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we were, we were one of the first paranormal businesses in Tucson, Arizona, Lawful Paranormal Investigations. We actually started downtown ghost tours of Tucson, and we started that in 2001. It was based on our cases that we did in the downtown area. Uh, we were called into what used to exist. We were called first into the Santa Clarita Hotel, which is now the... I believe the Tucson Energy yes, it place, is. which is not a good situation. <laughs> I can't believe that's where they put that. But anyways, we were called in there. We were called into the Greyhound. We were called into the former Radisson building, which is directly down, you know, from what was the former Santa Clarita. We were called into, uh, like, it was insane. We were called into so many, so many locations down there because people were having mental breakdowns, um, people were, they were losing business left and right. Um, it was a really horrible situation down there. Um, yeah. So yeah, we did all of that. And then we worked down there for many, many years. Um, like I said, I worked, I worked with the university of Arizona. I was working with the university of Georgia, um, working with the police. Um, so it was, it was definitely a very busy time um down there yeah yeah unfortunately we never got to do santa rita they tore that down before we did anything but i can tell you that we have uh talked to security at tep and they do say that they still see things 
damn straight they do. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I, well, we'll just all wait and see what happens. At least the boutique, they were going to build a boutique hotel there and residences, and I'm just glad they didn't do that. At least people aren't living or sleeping, you know, for the most part at that location right. anymore. Yeah, they actually have, is it a sushi restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, that they have kind of like in the bottom and then TEP's kind of around it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yep. So crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm currently under contract to write um, Haunted Tucson for Arcadia Publishing. Oh. And, oh, great. Yeah, so one of the things with all my research I'm doing is, you know, looking up all the, you know, old folklore and ghost stories of Tucson. And I have noticed with the history that there's a couple names that keep popping up no matter what I'm researching. And one of those are Lovey Manning. Sam Hughes. Mm-hmm. Sam Hughes. And there's a couple, uh-huh. Sam Hughes, yeah. Yeah, and there's a couple others that my mind's drawing blank on right now. Uh, but, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I have to wonder, because they're tied into so many of those businesses, if they're still yes. wandering around downtown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're all yep. like the godfathers of Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. And a lot of... Uh, interesting little situations that they all got themselves into too so yeah you'll have a good time with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just amazes me because the more i'm digging into the history and everything it's like i keep recognizing those names and i'm like okay i know that one from this one and this one and it's just mm-hmm. amazing how mm-hmm. it's all tied together tied together yep it sure is it sure is yeah. have you made it down to business that a busy was another place that we did we got called into a lot. We ended up staying out there for quite quite some time, doing uh, investigations and cases down there. We haven't actually done any investigations in Bisbee, but we have been, and we've stayed at like the Copper Queen and uh, what is the it, the Bisbee, Bisbee yeah. Inn. So okay, we, we okay. go down there and we have fun, and you know, do our little thing on our own, basically. Woo! That place is crazy. Yeah, I hope it's gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bisbee. I love it. I would absolutely live there if I could, but uh, I, I've been run out of that town more than once by the dead, so <laughs> <laughs> probably not a smart idea. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they may, you know, not like that then, apparently. No. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot of things in Tucson. We've uh, been to, like, Benson, Tombstone, Bisbee. Oh, yeah. Benson, Tombstone, yeah. You, what about up to Jerome? Yeah, that's yes. what I was going to ask you about Jerome. Have you been in the oh, yeah. original hospital? Yeah, many times, yeah. What? we got Actually, we got called in there. I think we stayed there for about three weeks uh, because the owner of his mom uh, were having a lot of a lot of issues back, back in the day. And, um, and it You know, and we did the case, and we're like, and one of the things, the simplest thing they had to do, apparently, uh, one of the things that one of the dead people there wanted was some old, um, like, bar put back or something, and it turned out they had it in the basement, and he just wouldn't do it. And I'm like, okay, you know, so we just kind of backed off. It was like, you're not going to take any of the suggestions, your mom's getting sicker, like, it was just a bad situation, so... Yeah, I was going to ask you, what is in that building? Because we went there and they were doing ghost tours or ghost hunts in there. And the, yeah, they were the, doing ghost hunts in the old building. Yeah, the, the son talked his dad into allowing him to do ghost tours in the old building. Um, the new owners? Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, people were going in there and they'd be going in there drunk and belligerent and disrespecting the spirits. See, here's the thing, is that back in the day, Jerome did not discuss their haunting. Oh, well, they do now. And <laughs> I know. When I went back, we did a case, I think it was in Sedona, not long ago. And my folks were out. My folks used to live in Sedona. 
And so we went ahead and we went to Jerome and we were, our jaws hit the floor. It is so now ghost commercialized. It's bad. Yes. Every other shop has a ghost tour at night. Wow. wow. I didn't see Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, because we went up there and we stayed in the Grand Jerome and then we did the ghost tour because I tend to try to do that when we go to different places. And Mm -hmm. uh, we went into the original hospital and Mm -hmm. the crowd that was there that night I sometimes hate doing these things because people don't respect the spirits and they get crazy. Yep. And being that we do this, you know, I hate the word professionally, but that's the only thing I can think of right now. We know that you don't do things like that. And so we tried Mm -hmm. to stay away from the crowd and we went into what was what, the morgue first? Yes. Okay. Both Will and I got touched in there. And then people Mm -hmm. started coming in there. So we went up to what was it, the third floor? Yep. And I started feeling really, really uneasy on that floor. Yeah. And I even told Will, I said, there is something up here that is not happy with how these people are treating this. That would be the, I think it was, I want to say it was one of the doctors. I want to say is up there. Is that who that was? I want to say it was. I'd have to look at all my... I have, like, a plethora of... Yeah, of uh, they had the showers doctors. up there and the bathroom. The mm-hmm. main showers and bathrooms mm-hmm. were on the third floor. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was him, because I think he had closed off that space for himself, dead-wise. And I think he gets irritated. Like, he... I don't think he was mentally sound when he was alive. If this is the right guy. Because there was also a minor and also the mortician who used to work, he used to work down the hill, but then he comes up all of the time to both, or to all three buildings, basically. Um, so it could be him as well, because I know he was getting irritated. So those were the three main main people there. Because they used to just chuck the bodies down the hill to him. Right. Yeah, they just toss them down. Just toss them down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I have a lot, lot, yeah, so much. I'd have to go through all of that stuff. Yeah, I just remember as soon as we got to that third floor, we were like, well, Will didn't feel it, but I was just like, oh, whoever is up here is unhappy. You did sense that someone was in the bathroom, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there's, and Becky didn't believe me at the time until some big dude, Probably about six foot five goes in there, and then comes running out like a screaming little girl because he got mm-hmm. touched by something. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I'm sure that things will get really interesting as time goes on, and they get more and more agitated. Yeah, I just know that unfortunate was, there was not happy with the people being in there and not taking it seriously and not being yeah. nice. <laughs> Yeah, that that's not good for anybody. Well, not good for anybody. I, one of our former team members wants us to let you know, say hello to you from her. Her name is Lori Five Coats, and she mm-hmm. wants you to know that she loves your show. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we we actually have uh, our other team members, Jennifer and um, our daughter Ashley, who's also on the team in the chat room, and. They're the ones that have been asking all kinds of questions for you, too. So. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Now, when you were here, uh, you had your own team, and you did the tours and everything. Does that mm-hmm. team still do things? Did they, like, move with you? Or when you moved? Um, some just... of them, yeah, in 06, um, I know that Teresa Ortiz and Rosalinda – um, I think they continued to do the tours for, for a bit, and Tyson, uh, uh, they all three did the tours for a bit afterwards, um, and I, and Teresa still does, um, she does more of the aftercare kind of work for people, um, and because, yeah, some of them did move with me, uh, to Colorado, 
so, which was Xenia and Josephine uh, and Matt and myself. Um, and Vicky stayed behind. Um, yeah, so everybody just kind of disbanded and they started doing the independent things. Uh, one of the people that we worked with, he was a um, clinical psychologist and he started working, specializing with children who uh, had experiences. So he went into child uh, psychology. Uh, so everybody just kind of went into unique niches within the field. Um, and they're all still working, so it's really good. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we're very lucky. We have, you know, a really good team right now that, you know, we work with. And uh, we do a lot of volunteer work. So I'm very lucky that they give up a lot of their time to do all this stuff. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. I'm, I'm trying to. I need glasses. That's what I need. Uh, <laughs> okay. Lori would like to know how hard is it on you when you go into larger locations and have to deal with multiple multitudes of spirits, and how do uh, how do you keep from being overwhelmed? Um, I don't know. Like I have a system pretty much down where it's like you know line up um, my guides kind of do, uh, they, they kind of control um, who, like, what they'll do is be like, okay, you're going to focus on this one because this person is extremely uh, need, you know, they need this right now and this other person doesn't necessarily need it or they're together in this, you know what I mean? So my guys kind of direct me as to, you need to speak to this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, you know, I have a lining up kind of thing that I do with them that they're kind of being crazy. Um, so, you know, what it really gets down to is being, uh, getting to the point of exhaustion after you're talking to so many people, just like, you know, if you're doing, you know, any kind of job where you're talking to a lot of different people and these people, especially being emotional, you know, angry or having a lot of complex emotions um, and memories and you're experiencing them both physically, mentally, and emotionally, and then you're getting drained and drained and drained and drained, uh, and then you do sometimes become vulnerable, and that's when situations can get out of hand. Um, so I try to take breaks and refuel uh, with bananas and insurers and things that will give me, you know, protein boost. Um, so that I can continue on doing as much as I can. Um, but those are much more difficult to recover from afterwards. I can imagine. So basically on those locations, you need like a, a little, uh, number dispenser. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Now serving. I wish I could talk to all of them, but Yeah. DMB. Everybody get one. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, buddy. Sit down. Wait your turn. I'll get to you. Yeah. The number's not being called right now. I don't know how it goes. Yeah. Well, now we know what to buy Amy as a gift. <laughs> right? <laughs> a spiritual That's a good t- t- ticket count. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Uh, I can see us you know, just doing that for her the next time we see her. There we go. All right, so we always do tend to get a little off subject on this show because, you know, we like to do a little bit of everything. And I know from mm-hmm. following you on Twitter that you have a cat. A five cat. Okay. Uh oh, you're not the crazy cat lady, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. I have five cats and I have two dogs. Okay, you're good to go. Oh, you're good not to go. Completely you added the crazy dogs, so cat lady. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm guessing you're an animal lover then. Lightly. Just lightly. Just lightly. I'm actually right now looking at a fox, so we'll see. Well, the next time you come to Tucson then, uh, you are invited to our house because we do have a zoo. At least Will says we oh. have a zoo. What? We have Who's two, all there? We have two cats, three dogs. Twelve chickens, <gasps> two aquariums. We have two ferrets, two tortoises, oh two bunnies, 
And our newest oh. is we added three sugar gliders. Oh my God, I'm so coming over. <laughs> I'm so there. Oh my God, I'm, bunnies and the sugar gliders and the tort Oh, forget about it. That's awesome. You guys are so lucky. Yeah, Will doesn't yeah. think so. <laughs> I feed most of these things. <laughs> no, don't you love them all? Oh, it's not It's not that I don't love them. It's just my routine as soon as I wake up in the morning is to feed 80% of them. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, Rob's like, that, that's on me. I have to. He's like, if we're getting a farm, you're, in char- you know, you're feeding all the animals. And yeah. He, although he wants a horse, I said, then the horse is yours to take care of. Well, I, I did From A to, to Z. Get, I, get, I managed to get Becky to at least take care of the cats and the sugar gliders. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's a, almost even, kind of. <laughs> well, like what? I said, we have a mini zoo. I am a huge animal person. I love animals. And, uh, awesome. I always see you posting about, you know, the cats and everything, so... Like I said, we like to get off the subject a little bit and stir things up. So I figured that would be a perfect Aww. subject to bring up as animals. <laughs> yes, I, I miss them dearly. I can't wait. I have another, I don't know, 10 days or so on the road and can't wait to get home to see the babies. Yeah. Can't wait for more 10, 12, 13 days. <laughs> <laughs> you lose well, track, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Now, I'm sure it's track. hard to basically live out of a suitcase for so long, too. Is it what? It's hard to live <laughs> out of a suitcase. Yeah, it is. That I, it has to be the hardest part of this job, honestly, is, is, is the traveling and the traveling. Yeah. But it's good to be able to access people that we would not have normal. Right. access to yeah. so yeah right. pros and cons pros and cons yeah. exactly mm-hmm. so we're being asked about your guides um are there people see i'm tongue tied okay. yet are your guides family members friends or how did you your guides and you end up together well I'm pretty sure they were with me all the time um i have quite quite a collection uh, there's people that I don't know who they are, where they came from, but they're helpful. They're great. Um, <laughs> and I have family members, some family members, absolutely. Um, and I have friends. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely an eclectic mix, an eclectic group of people, for sure. <laughs> And uh, they're they're wonderful people. They're my good dad and uh, my guide, and they help me, and they've been helping me since I can remember. So, yeah, definitely blessed. And I'm blessed that I do get to interact with them, like see most of them and hear them and talk to them and all of that. I'm definitely lucky. All right. So what would you suggest for someone you know, trying to get in contact with their guides or trying to get in touch with their, I don't like to call it special ability, but I don't really know how else to refer to it right now. Um, you know, my thing is, is that if you think you have abilities, the first thing I tell everybody to do is learn how to meditate. Uh, learn how to do, uh, I think, The best is, like, you know, learning how to do bubble protections, visualizations, uh, long uh, guided uh, meditations. Um, Starting off with that, uh, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do. Um, Also going and learning about uh, any and all different types of protection measures is extremely important. Having the tools to protect yourself up front um, and learning how to meditate are the two most important things you can do to prepare to get in touch with your abilities. Uh, As far as the guides, you know what? If it's meant to be, they'll present. 
And if not, you're, you know, you will learn how to communicate with your guide while you're on your journey. And some will appear to people and some won't. Uh, I don't believe in telling people, you know, just recently for the first time, I think I told somebody who their guide was and it was the case we just did. Um, and, uh, but typically, no way. I don't tell people. That's not for me to do. That's their guides. Their guides know what's best for them, and they will present or not, uh, and they will communicate in the way that they need to with that person. Uh, so that's my take on the whole thing. Okay. Now, I know when you've, you know, done these reveals and stuff, a lot of times, uh, you know, you will point out to someone that, you know, they have, you know, these abilities. Now, is that something that you are able to do all the time? Can you, like, pinpoint people and say, you know, you're this or you're that? Or is that something that your guides tell you? I'll get, well, it's always my guides. I do shit. I do nothing. I'm just a medium. Like, literally what that means, like, I'm just a medium. The dead talk to me. I tell their stories. I'm just a voice for them. Um, and, And that's the same with my guides. I'm just a voice for my guides. My guides are the ones who are like, this is what's going on with this living person, you know? (laughs) Um, This is what they need to do, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, So it's all of them. Um, But I prefer, because I am, like, I started out, you know, like, I am definitely more of a skeptic and a researcher first. Mm -hmm. And that's something that will never go away. Uh, But so when I'm meeting somebody and, you know, the guys are like indicating to me, like, this person might be a psychic or a medium or a telepath or, you know, they're a psychometrist or whatever. Uh, you know, I'll be like, you know, this is something that you should look into. You should read up on it, yada, yada, yada. But for me, I'm like, I would have to test that person uh, to get down to the root of how open are they, what type of ability do they have, their their uh, dominant, their secondary, their latent, et cetera, what jobs would they be best at doing? Um, all of these things and factors come into play. Are they psycho- psychologically well enough to handle it? Um, so on and so forth. Uh, so, you know, that'll indicate, but I would have to test the person before I'm like, you are definitely this. Right. So. That sounds like something Will would do, test everyone. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of important to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Well, I know you are on the road, and I know you have mm-hmm. a very busy, busy schedule. Uh, yeah. We really do appreciate you coming on tonight. And before we let you go, uh, mm-hmm. we want to find out again for those that maybe didn't tune in right away when is dead files due back on the air so season 11 of the dead files will start airing in june all right and of course you're still on the travel channel yeah she had to think about that. i'm sorry we did get purchased by discovery so i had a moment there i had a moment but yes, we're still on the travel channel, and uh, and I'm also doing an event, the Perry Unity event in New Jersey, in Woodbridge, New Jersey, um, and that's in May. In May, and do you have any other events coming up, or? I do in Michigan. No, huh? Nothing out Michi- here. Is it huh? <laughs> I wish. I wish. I wish, and I may be doing the Queen Mary again, uh, I think, in April. Yeah, in April. Oh, we love the Queen Mary. That yeah. is such a Have good a, place. Yeah, I think I'm going to go down and see a Chad and a Lindsay. Oh, okay, Lindsay. Uh, we actually mm-hmm. have Lindsay doing an event here in Tucson uh, with Slaughterhouse. Oh, really? Yeah. When? Come May, she's uh, bringing out Grant Wilson and Dana and Greg Newkirk, and they're oh, going to do the Greg. slaughterhouse. So oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so I, I know who Lindsay is. She is such a sweetheart. We love mm-hmm. her. Yep, yep. 
Dana's great too. Dana and Greg are awesome people. Shout out to them. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're very happy to start getting some events out here in Tucson because, as you know, Tucson's very popular for haunted history, but we don't get a lot of people realizing that, so. I know! I know, it's so bizarre. I know. I would love to, to do an event in Tucson. That'd be awesome. Well, maybe we'll so have to hit work me on that. <laughs> yeah. We might have to work on that then. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Talk to Lindsay. Yeah, we, we will definitely do that. We'll say, Lindsay, you got to bring Amy out now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. All right, well, awesome. Thank you guys for having me on. Thank well, you so much. Well, yes, thanks thank for you. being on the show. And, and the next thank time you. you're in Tucson, look us up. Yeah, I will. Right. <laughs> I'm coming over for some fur baby time. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that was amy allen we are so thankful that she was able to be on air tonight uh we were we were starting to wonder because we knew she was out on the road so we knew it was going to be tough but very thankful for that and now we'll have to try to plan an event with amy yeah but where i don't know there's so many haunted places out here it's just getting them to open up yeah you know and some are willing so who knows never know uh, but anyway, for all of our listeners, once again, we want you to please subscribe. We are halfway to our goal of iHeartRadio. So, yes, uh, you can already find us on Spotify. And, of course, this is our home base here on Spreaker. Um, as I was telling Amy, we do have that event with Center Stage, May 3rd and May 4th. But May 3rd is sold out. But May 4th still has tickets. So go to Center with an S. So S E N T E R stageevents.com and you can purchase your tickets there and uh, we have a couple things coming up that I want to announce before we go Okay. Uh, number one we have the free well we're giving a free lecture but you have to pay admission to the museum apparently on March 22nd at the mini time machine museum right that's yes. what it's called okay here in Tucson Uh, They're doing a ghost story night, and we're going to do like a 15-minute ghost story and have tables and everything set up, and that's on March 22nd. April 13th, we have uh, Arcadia Ranch, which is the old TV hospital out in Oracle, and part of the proceeds for that is going to the Historical Society out in Oracle. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I think that's all we have going on that way besides the center stage event we have a lot of investigations and things coming up but public wise i think that's it for now yeah that is it yeah um so i know we usually go for two hours but uh since amy was only able to be on for an hour tonight we're gonna go ahead and cut our show short for tonight too so we can do one of the millions of things that we need to get done tonight so (laughs) Oh, no. I know. I'm putting you to work. I am so sorry. I'm going to put you to work. (laughs) So what do you want to say to all of our listeners, honey? Well, thanks for tuning in. Sorry we cut it short. But (laughs) tune in next week. We'll be back. Yes, we will be back next week at 9 p.m. Eastern. I know time changed everywhere, but we are still 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, It changed for us, though. Because we used to go on at 7 our time, now it's 6 our time. Hey, so. but you know what didn't change? The time. The time. Yeah, Arizona doesn't change their time. <laughs> didn't have to move the clock forward, didn't have to move backwards. Yeah, we're good. But yeah, 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday night. Please tune in. And uh, we appreciate the support. Love you all for listening. And remember, we accommodated you by changing the time we start the show here. <laughs> <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern. That never changes. All right. So until next week, everyone, remember, you're never truly alone. Good night, everyone.